Okay, welcome to Aromatic Ingredient and Flavors Application Chapter 7. For this week, we're going to talk about flavors applications. Yeah. So previously, we have uh, talked about uh, the flavors, okay, their stability, the molecule. Basically, we sp have spoken about the uh, flavor molecules okay, or flavor compounds. And also, we spoke about the, uh, uh, how it's being generated, the uh, flavor molecules. Then we talk about their stability as well, and we have briefly spoke about uh, how you can protect it through uh, uh, the what we call the encapsulations. Okay, so for this week we're going to talk about how uh, how these molecules are being delivered. Okay, which means that how these molecules are being uh, so called diluted. Okay. Uh, it can be either in the liquid form or in the powder form for applications. Okay. So let's look at this: the liquid or powder flavorings. Flavorings needs to understand the food into which the flavor will be applied and the processing and storage condition to which it will be subjected to select the carrier or releasing agent needed to protect the flavor and to make it available and enjoyable at the point of consumption. Okay, so what this means, right, is that basically, uh, if you want to, uh, uh when you want to, um, sort of like dilute or use it, a solvent to actually deliver these flavor molecules, you first need to look at what is the property of this food molecule, uh, this flavor molecule. Okay, is this flavor molecule, uh, water soluble? Is this flavor molecule oil soluble, or so forth? Okay. How about their stability? And also, where is this flavor going to apply to? Is it to, to, a, to a liquid? Okay. Is the liquid polar? Is the liquid non-polar? What other things is in there? Okay. Is it in the cookie or so forth? Okay. So we need to look at a lot of dimensions to actually uh, use the, uh, to put the flavors molecule into a, uh, the solvent. Okay. It can be either salt in the solvent, okay, oil or water, or it can be in the powder forms, okay. So a lot of things need to be considered as well, and uh, uh, it also includes like for example the flavor molecules. What is their threshold? Is it that you only require a low amount, okay, which is sufficient to deliver the keynotes of the flavor to the consumer, or is, do you need a high concentrations? Okay, whether the polarity, as I mentioned, is it polar or non-polar? How about volatility? Is it volatile? Okay, if it's volatile at room temperature, then you need to uh, uh, take good care of it in terms because you don't want to lose the flavor molecules at room temperature. Okay, uh, how about the stability? Is it easy to get uh, degraded in the acidic conditions? Okay, uh, the heat and so forth. So all this you need to take into consideration uh, when you actually put uh, when you actually put the flavor molecules in either deliver through a liquid flavoring, okay, or through a powder or encapsulations, yeah. Okay, let's look at some of the uh, very common ones um, when you are water soluble liquid flavors, yeah. Okay, so when your flavor is water soluble liquid flavors, you can actually dilute the flavor molecule okay so the flavor molecule can be dissolved or dilute in what we call the uh, polar solvent okay so water soluble liquid flavors liquid flavors are made by blending the required flavoring substance in the desired concentration with a particular food grade solvent okay uh, so the required flavoring substance, right, the desired concentration actually depend on the threshold of the flavor molecule. Okay, if just say that the flavor molecules um, cannot be detected at low concentration, then you need to bump up the concentration into the, uh, into the uh, fl liquid flavors to actually deliver the uh, flavor molecules for the consumers. Okay, if it's just a small amount needed, then that's it, okay? So you just need to put a small low concentration and it can be uh, experienced or detected by the consumers. Then you need to select appropriate solvents, okay, based on its ability to dissolve the required flavoring compounds. So then make sure that the, the solvent and the flavoring molecules or flavoring compounds are compatible, 
Okay, very important that you need to make sure that they are con compatible, and also not only they are compatible. Make sure that the if you uh where you want to apply this uh liquid flavoring, okay, make sure that it's solubility in the food product to which is to be applied, okay, which means that it can dissolve in there. If it's non compatible, the flavor molecule, when the liquid flavor is going to separate it out from your products, okay. So make sure that there are three ways. Uh, sort of like the uh, the compatibilities yeah okay so make sure that the solvent okay so flavor molecule is uh, compatible with the uh, food product so it's a three-way thing yeah so make sure they are compat uh, compa uh, com compatible with each other for the flavor chemical and natural components Okay, they are dissolved in the simple solvents. Yeah, the two most common ones are that I'm going to talk about in this uh, lecture, right? Is the propylene glycol as a triacetin. Okay, let's look at the first one, uh, propylene glycol. Propylene gly glycol, okay, is a uh, very, uh, very common, uh, the uh, of the solvent. Okay, is one of the solvent of choice in the food industry as well. It's a uh, colorless. Slightly weakest, not very, very weakest, but slightly weakest with a very faintly sweet taste, yeah. And it's miscible with water, alcohol, and many flavor com compound. That is why it's a very uh, popular solvent uh, for the liquid flavors, yeah. Uh, and it's a uh, very in, uh, relatively inexpensive. But there's one thing is that uh, based on the EU legislation, you should not exist three grams per grams of the uh, propylene glycol, yeah. Okay, by the way, propylene glycol is also a very uh, sort of like common the uh, solvent for the whipped juice, okay, for vaping, okay. The whipped juice, they actually use the propylene glycol as the solvent to dissolve uh, of the uh, flavor molecules, yeah. So propylene glycol can have some reactions during flavoring storage, yeah. So... Once you actually combine the flavor molecule with the solvents, okay, then you need to actually uh, take into consideration as well uh, how much is the um, is the reactions uh, between the propylene glycol, which is the solvent, and your flavoring molecules. Is it going to be significant or is there going to be any impact to the when you actually apply to your food molecule, okay, uh, your food products? For example, or is your food products able to deliver? Again, okay, once you put the liquid flavoring in your food products, are you going to deliver the flavors to the consumer or not? Okay, that is a very, very important uh, question that you need to uh, ask yourself. So, propylene glycol, right? Let's look about the reaction first. Propylene glycol contains two hydroxyl groups. Uh, so, you can see this is the molecule of the propylene glycol. Uh, there are two hydroxyl groups over here, which is readily able to react. Uh, as you have learned from the uh, organic chemistry, okay, the alcohol can actually react with either aldehyde or ketones. Yeah, basically the carbonyl groups. It can react to form what we call acetal or ketones. Yeah, okay. Some of the examples, like for example, the uh, cinnamon. Okay, cinnamon aldehydes. It can form what we call the cinnamon aldehyde propylenes, glycol acetal, or vanillin forms the vanillin propyl glycol acetal. Yeah. So these reactions, okay, uh, can actually reduce the amount of the uh, the the similar aldehydes or the vanillin, which means that the the flavor molecules can the concentration will reduce with the formation of all these acetal or ketones. Okay, that is one thing you need to remember. Then the reaction between the propylene glycol can also react with organic acids. Okay, organic acid also commonly added into a flavoring uh, agent as well. Okay, for example, acetic or butyric acids. To f then the reaction can lead to the formation of the monoesters as well as the diesters. Yeah. Then the last uh, reaction is that it can lead to the uh, transacidification reaction of propylene glycol with the uh, lactones. Yeah, lactones to give the dihydroxyl ester. Okay, so these three reactions uh, basically can have an impact on the flavor molecule that you added into the propylene glycol as a solvent. Okay, 
Uh, okay, let's uh, quickly look at this. Okay, this one is what you have learned before in the organic chemistries. The ketones okay, can react with the alcohol. In this case, the alcohol would be the propylene glycol. Okay, then it can uh, lead to the formation of the ketone or the aldehyde lead to formation of acetal. Yeah, okay. So basically, the ketones or the aldehyde is your flavor molecules okay, and react with the propylene glycol to form the ketone or acetals thus increasing the concentration of ketone and acetals and decreasing the amount of your flavor molecules so what is the impact to the flavor uh, during the flavor storage so as you store longer what happens is that more of your flavor molecules will be converted to acetal or ketones okay so it can uh, not only that it can also yield many compounds during the storage of the flavoring the the reaction that i have spoken about so it will lead to a loss of the starting material and the formation of breakdown products may have negative impact on the quality of the flavoring. However, the increased complexity of the flavoring may provide a mean of masking its ingredient, providing a flavor ring manufacturer with some protection from flavor matching by other companies. Yeah. Uh, because nowadays, right, if you if you are competing with each other, right, you can actually buy your compatible Compet competitors uh, the flavor uh, products and then you ask the uh, GCMS uh, the technicians or the lab uh, technicians to actually run a test and find out what are the molecules in there as well as the possible to look at the concentration okay so with the formation of all this during storage okay it's possible it, it makes it more complicated to for analysis yeah so it's more difficult to for the uh, technicians uh, to actually find out what exactly you put in your uh, products so it, it can be a good thing as well okay in terms of our uh, competitions yeah uh, one bad thing about it right is that if you form the acetal and ketals okay uh, may actually confer ex uh, you can actually uh, give the extra protection against oxidations but the bad thing is that it can form two layers in the flavoring due to insolubility to the propylene glycol yeah because acetal and ketal right can be insoluble in propylene glycol so at the end your flavoring uh the the liquid flavoring right you can actually as you store longer and longer you can you might able to see it's actually two layers yeah okay so two layers okay so the bottle so you may able to see two layers uh at the uh flavor molecules yeah it can be a bad thing okay people will say that hey what is happening over there okay and the consumer may actually uh, complain yeah so you must uh, think about that one. Uh, the second solvent that is very common that to use is actually what we call the triacetin. Yeah, triacetin, okay, or what we call one, two, three propane trio triacetate. Okay, is a colorless, slightly viscous liquid with a very refined ethereal fruit odor. Yeah, ethereal fruit is like not banana taste. It's like during the banana ripening, right? You can uh, have a bit of like uh, smell as well. Yeah. Okay, the ripening, so-called ripening smell, yeah. So the triacetate is less polar than uh, propylene glycol. Later, you will see that triacetins is also can be used in the uh, oil, uh, uh, the oil base, yeah, the oil base or the non-polar base sort of like the uh, uh, solvent, yeah. So triacetate is less polar than propylene glycol. Triacetate does not react with aldehyde, yeah. So in this case. Uh, then uh, the triacetins had has some advantages in terms that uh, it, it won't form uh, the acetal or ketones, uh, which means that it will not have uh, problems like, for example, the separations of the uh, the the propylene glycol from the acetal or ketones. Yeah, and another thing is that uh, the the won't react means that your starting material won't drop too much as well okay during storage yeah so your flavor molecules can have a higher concentrations uh, the triacetins actually also shows uh, shown to enhance the flavor the stability of the flavor molecules like for example citro okay citros was being uh, protected against degradations yeah so okay uh, you can see from here uh, this is the reference for this, the acetal one. 
Okay, the, this one is uh, in the handout. Okay, I have uh, attached with the handout, handout number one. Okay, you can see that from this author, they actually look at uh, the, the use different uh, of the of the uh, solvent, the acid, acid, uh, triacetins, as well as the propylene glycol to dissolve the vanillin. Okay, and also looking at uh, the, the HMF, how much of HMF has been produced during the uh, baking process. Yeah, okay. Uh, HMF have uh, mentioned before in the previous lecture, so you can go back in looking at that. So they found that biscuit made with triacetin as the flavor solvents have having the greatest concentration of HMF as well as the vanillin compared to that uh, made with propylene glycol as the flavor solvents. Yeah, okay. So they actually this is the cookie they bake and then they actually chop off uh, this part and. Uh, each of this part A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7 are being analyzed. What is the concentration of the vanillin in there? So you can see from here the propylene glycol, you can see that <coughs> the peak is only 140 okay, ppm. Whereas the one with the triacetin, uh, you can see that it went up to 160 ppm. So it's, uh, that's why I say that it really depends on the uh, flavor. Uh, delivery, uh, especially your end product. Okay, of course, people would want their end product. Okay, that during consumption you can have a lot of vanillin or vanilla uh, flavor in there. Okay, so in this case, then you may uh, get the vanillin that is being dissolved in the uh, triacetin. Okay, rather than the propylene glycol to actually deliver. A higher concentration of the vanillin in your biscuit, yeah. But again, uh, you really will look at uh, your product as well, okay. Uh, whether the triacetin can actually mix with your formula, okay. If can't, then you need to go back to propylene glycol, even though it's lower concentration, but you still need to use the propylene glycol as a solvent, yeah. Okay, so this is the uh, basically the uh, summary. Okay. So we have uh, there are a lot of other solvents as well. The one that we have picked is uh, propylene glycol. So you can see the advantage over here fairly cheap. Readily available, widely acceptable, low volatility. Okay, the disadvantage is that it's poor solvent for citrus oil, limited assembly in some countries. Yeah, whereas the triacetins, fairly cheap, good solvent for flavor materials, does not react with aldehydes, low volatility and flammabilities. Uh, basically, oil soluble, uh, ten percent soluble in water. Uh, normal grits, no vegetarians. Uh, kosher or halal. Yeah, so you can see that there are pro and cons. Uh, for using propylene glycol or triacetin. So you need to look at uh, all the uh, criteria. What is the f f uh, the flavor molecule you want to deliver? Okay, uh, And what is the food products or food formulations that you are going to use? See whether they are compatible or not. Yeah. And one more thing as well. Uh, what is the storage condition of your food products? Okay. Uh, as well as the uh, condition of your food products, the pH, the salt, and things like that. Yeah, all these play a very important role in deciding what is the best uh, flavoring, uh, the solvents that can be uh, delivered. Yeah. Okay. Then the next one is the all oil soluble liquid flavors. In this case. The your is obviously the uh, flavor molecule is non-polar, yeah. So when your uh, when your flavor molecule is non-polar, obviously you need to actually uh, dissolve in the oil based of the uh, the the solvents, yeah. Okay. Uh, so in this case, you can use the hydrogenated oil or fats to actually mix with your uh, flavor molecules. Okay, it can be a blend of either C6 to C10, okay, triglycerides. Uh, for example, it derived from uh, coconut oil, uh, which is natural, normal ingredients of food stuff. Okay, it may contain trans fatty acid. The, the bad thing is that it may contain trans fatty acid, yeah. 
which uh, people is give is already have a lot of uh, negative sort of like image to the consumer yeah uh, reasonable solvent for many lipophilic flavor applications yeah so if your formulations of your food product is uh, is uh, oil based okay or majority is oil then you can add this one okay another one that is a very popular solvent for all these uh, non-polar type of the uh, flavor molecule is uh, triethyl citrates okay it's insoluble in water uh, one more thing is that it possess a mild uh, whiny fruity palm like uh, the odors and commonly used for carrying berry butterscotch uh, cherry honey and other flavors for application to baked goods okay so you can use this one uh, uh, to uh, add into your baked goods yeah uh, however the taste is bitter at concentration above uh, 500 ppm yeah which restrict is used in many food applications yeah because of course who wants to have uh, apply uh, what what it means right is that uh, if just say that you require to have a high concentration of this product in your food products okay then possible is not suitable because it can actually give a bitter taste yeah so uh, a very short summary that you can see uh, the advantage of using hydrogen oil okay natural normal ingredient of food stuff okay however the disadvantage is that it may uh, have poor solubility for some ingredients, I guess, stabilized by antioxidants, okay, because you need to stabilize by antioxidants because you don't want the oil to get uh, oxidized here yeah, because it can lead to rancidity. Uh, may contain trans fatty acids, okay, concerned about allergic response here. Yeah. And then triethyl citrates, okay, is high stability, uh, very good solvent properties, okay, but the bad thing is that uh, it can be quite expensive, okay and also the uh, bitter taste yeah all right uh, at high concentrations okay so the concern about uh, allergy response it can uh, because it's derived from all the plant oil so sometimes right people are allergic to certain type of the plant oil yeah so that is what it means yeah okay the next one for liquid flavoring is the emulsion base okay emulsion base like for example uh, the orange oil. Orange oil is basically essential oils, uh, and they usually they have uh, slightly lower density. Yeah, okay. Because of the slightly lower density, what happened right is that it can lead to separation. So in this case, uh, the the orange oil is is best to actually it being emulsified, okay, to and uh, it will be uh, emulsified, and then you deliver the emulsions. Okay, you deliver through emulsions. Yeah. So in this case, you can use or uh, you can use emulsifier or what we call the or in this case waiting agents, okay, sucrose, uh, acetate, isobutyrates, okay, glycerol, esters of wood, oxins, deodorized gum resins, deodorized waxes, brominated vegetable oils, okay. Uh, you can use some of these to actually uh, create a uh, the essential oil emulsions for delivery into your food products, okay. Okay, so that is the uh, liquid flavors. Now we enter into powder flavors. Okay, there are some advantages uh, of the uh, powder compared to liquid. Okay, liquid you can see a lot in your baking uh, the the stores. You can see that actually they are in bottles. Okay, they are all in liquids, uh, and depending on the flavor molecules, they are dissolved in different uh, solvent that I have uh, mentioned previously. Okay, the previous slides. Uh, but one thing about this is that the powder, uh, powder flavors has some dis, uh, some has some advantages as well. Okay, uh, it actually improves handling. Handling powder is much more safer or easier compared to handling liquids. Correct or not? Liquids is heavier and it can break and so forth. Whereas the powder form we can put in the bags. Okay, uh, it does it doesn't have any like uh, like leaking and so forth. Yeah. Uh, the powder also is able to stabilization of the volatile organic compounds and melt losses. Uh, it can help to encapsulate the encapsulate the flavors and protect it. Uh, sometimes you actually can design in such a way that you can control release the flavor. Okay, uh, especially, especially what I have mentioned in the previous uh, lecture that during the uh, what we call the mastications, you can actually break the capsule and release the flavor. Yeah, uh, sometimes the capsule 
or the powder form can extend the product shelf life as well okay as well as improve the storage options okay much more stable flavors protects from oxidation okay it can create a barrier between the two or more incompatible ingredients in your formulation as well okay so that they don't interact with each other as well as you get a barrier between the flavor and the ingredients in the food products yeah so there are a lot of advantages in this case okay the the main technology for producing powder flavors uh, there are a few but i'm going to uh, look at these two plating and spray drying yeah so what is plating plating is uh there are some advantages in plating i'm going to talk about the uh how you do that later on okay so the main advantage is that the plated flavors and spices are low production costs, very very cheap okay it's a very simple process Later you see how it's being plated okay and easy easier handling of problem uh ingredients such as chili and pepper oil raisins and uh, the main disadvantage is that it can lead to rapid loss of volatiles okay possible okay low flavor loads okay low flavor loads means that you cannot add too much cannot be uh, too high concentrations of your flavor compounds there yeah, because it may lead to a uh, the the free flowing it may it may limit the free flowing of the powder yeah and uh, sometimes it can lead to poor production of the flavors and also uh or the oxidations yeah okay so plating is uh, very simple plating refer to the physical blending okay it's a physical blending yeah of the liquid substance onto the solid carrier to create a free flowing powder yeah so the liquid substance will be your flavor molecules okay and the solid carriers will be the uh, plating agents okay once it's being mixed uh, then you can create a free flowing powder okay okay so this is how you do it you first you can uh, weigh out the plating agents okay a lot of all these plating agents you can actually get from ingredients which is uh, also working very very closely uh, with the RC as well as the country programs okay uh, so the plating agents um, can be weighed out okay once you weigh out already then you add the plating agent into a mixer okay then you turn on the mixer at the speed number one <coughs> with plating agent in it then you slowly you add your uh, plating material or liquid this one is basically the flavor uh, molecule yeah so your flavor mo molecule slowly add to it and then you mix it uh, until until you see that all the oils and liquids are incorporated onto the plating agents yeah the mixing usually do not uh, be more than 10 minutes okay so to avoid you need to avoid over mixing yeah okay because sometimes over mixing can lead to the uh, sort of like the other way around instead of incorporating you actually you are breaking it and releasing out some of your flavor molecules yeah so there are some uh very very good products over in ingredients okay you got this uh enzorbit uh, 2144 plating agents or this uh enzorbit uh m maltodextrins okay uh, you can see that it can plate up to 40 percent okay it can plate both the oil soluble and water soluble liquids okay so which means that your flavor molecules can be either oil based or the water based one uh flowable and uniform plating products better shelf life stability than measure of plating agents yeah and for this one you can plate up to 60 percent liquid that's a lot actually in low densities and plates water soluble liquids yeah so this is some of the uh picture you can see that uh they actually play after plating you can see that um they are in the paste form okay when too high concentration it will be uh affect a flowabilities okay and by reducing 10 percent you can see that they become powders here yeah. okay so you can see this is after plated the uh agent okay 40 percent 60 percent of the uh flavor molecules okay you can see that they are in the powder form here yeah. Actually, the plating you can do your own yeah so in in the case that you say that you want to convert your liquid flavor into the powder you can get what we call the plating agent from the ingredients and then you can put in the mixer and make your own uh, of your flavor uh, molecule yeah the powder form okay again powder form is much more easier to handle and also sometimes easier to actually incorporate into your recipes yeah so you can use that as well 
and sometimes it can protect the uh, flavor molecules as well. Okay, so this is the easier way you can do it yourself in the in the uh, R and D. So you can see from here, all right. Then you can see some of the products. You can see that uh, they are in the free flowing uh, powder. Yeah, you can see from here. Yeah, yeah, which is very very good. Uh, especially the, uh, this was done uh, and tested under accelerated shelf life. Okay, they put at high humidity, 30, 30 degrees Celsius, uh, 70 percent. Uh, relatively humid. 70 percent is very very humid. Yeah, for three days you can see that uh, more or less they are still in the uh, powder form. Yeah, so it's very very good. Yeah. So other than plating, right, the other common one is spray drying. Okay, uh, spray drying can protect the uh, flavor molecules. Sometimes it can actually mask the taste as well. Just say that you don't want the uh, taste to be inside. Like for example, fish oil. Okay, if you want to, you can actually encapsulate fish oil. Of course, there are not flavor molecules. Okay, uh, it can actually mask the fish oil taste from your formulations. Okay, it's easier to handle. It can uh, have some, if you design properly, it can lead to a uh, control release the flavor as well. Okay, it can release, control release uh, during the chewing, okay, or maybe control release during uh, baking or mastication and so forth. Yeah, uh, it, can, uh, it can actually put in the dry mix application as well. Okay, this is very important. Like for example, if you want to do a uh, baking, for baking, the cookie mix. Okay, uh, a dry cookie mix, yeah, for so that people can take the dry cookie mix in the powder form, go home, and then do their own baking. So in this case, you can put this into your uh, formulation as well. Okay, same goes to the plating; you can do that as well. Okay. So this is the schematic illustrations of the um, encapsulation process. You can see that first you actually add the uh, the molecule okay uh, the flavor molecules add together with the more wall materials yeah the material that you'll be used to encapsulate the flavor so usually once you add it ready then you will emulse, make it into emulsions okay the emulsions then you can use the mechanical process uh, i'm going to explain okay the mechanical process which is what we call the spray drying yeah so the emulsions which in the liquid form after spray dry okay so spray dry means what they spray out and then the dry it, okay? It's easier to spray and then dry it, okay? Once it's dry, then you you get these uh, micro uh, particles, yeah, okay? The micro particles can have uh, some control release or extension of shelf life properties. So this is another schematic diagram to illustrate, okay? So this one is your emulsions you form, uh, including your wall material as well as your flavor molecules. Okay, then after that, you will go to this chamber, drying chamber. And here you can see this one is a spinning disc. Okay, the spinning disc is where you spray out the liquid. Okay, so you spray out the liquid into the drying chamber. Along when it's dropping down, it will dry. Okay, all this has been calculated uh, calculated carefully in order for you to say that from here, once it drops down, it's going to dry the powder. Okay, then they use a cyclone to suck it up and then they collect the products here so you can see there are different type of the nozzle okay it can be a nozzle type or it can be this form uh, to spray out the liquids for drying yeah so during drying you can see that at first see that there's a lot of liquids as it dries out all these are flavor molecules they are the one in the uh, yellow one okay the yellow one uh, is it can be uh, the oil base or whatever that carries your flavor molecules so as you dry out, you can see that the water is being uh, uh, reduced. Okay, of course, some of the flavor molecule can lost as well. Uh, as you dry out, you can see that uh, they can form what we call a void. Okay, so this one can be one of your powder and the powder particles. Okay, back inside, yeah. Okay, so you can see over here spray dry okay and then you can actually do some testing so uh, for the R&D for research and development for the uh, encapsulants okay they actually do some testing to test how stable it is okay they will test against the oxidations oil retentions how much it can retain 
okay surface and test at all the possible condition as well like enzymes heat ph oxygen to test how stable is the molecules here so you can uh, usually all this are be has been done by the manufacturer of the flavor more uh, flavor uh, of the uh, liquid or the powder flavorings okay usually they actually test all these things here okay so when they sell it to you they can say that oh what is your application your application is this 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 okay at this temperature this temperature then you can actually uh, recommend what type of the uh, flavoring uh, is it going to be liquid going to be powder uh, and what sort of the uh, of the spray dry uh, the flavoring as well for your applications okay so we can have a lot of all this uh, can uh, be found with uh, ingredients so you can uh, look through their website as well yeah okay so i will stop here for this okay so if you got question please feel free to ask in the padlets all right if you got no question please indicate no question in the palette yeah all right so thank you very much